Welcome to our lecture online. Before we apply the virtual work technique on trusses, we should do this example first. We're going to do virtual work with a spring. Because a spring, to some extent, acts like a beam inside a truss. When you compress a beam, the beam gets a little bit shorter. When you tense a beam, you put stress on a beam, try and elongate the beam, then the beam gets a little bit longer. Kind of the way a spring works, so there's some relationship between the two. So what we have here is we have two beams right here, which are attached together here. This is attached to a fixed component right here. It can't move, it can only swivel. And here, this is attached to a wheel that can roll up and down against this wall right here. And let's assume that there's no friction at this moment. So we have a spring connected between these two. As you push down here at the end, this whole contraption will then elongate like this and it'll pull on the spring. So what we're going to try to find first is we're going to find the force on the spring and then we're going to find the force here in terms of the force of the spring and the angle theta, which is right here. Of course, this will swing through a small angle change, d theta. Notice that this is the unstretched length of the spring. We'll call that L sub naught. And before we do virtual work, the spring already has been elongated by distance x so that the total distance y2 is right here, the total distance y1 is from there to there. We have a small increase in the distance, dy1, when we apply the force and we allow it to do virtual work. And then, of course, we're going to have an increased distance, dy2 here. dy2 should be twice dy1 because, because of the symmetry. This will then get displaced twice as far as this because this is related to two beams moving. This is related to just one beam moving. So let's define the initial spring elongation x. x is going to be equal to the full length y2. So we can say that this is going to be equal to y2 minus the unstretched length L sub naught, which is going to be a constant relative to this spring. Now, how do we define y2? Well, since y1 can be defined as being L times the sine of the angle, which is, this is opposite to the angle theta, then the total distance from there to there would be twice that. So we could say that y2 is equal to 2L times the sine of theta, which can go in there. So we have, um, this is equal to y2, which is 2L. This is the length of the beam. This is the initial length of the spring. So 2L times the sine of theta minus the initial length of the spring. And that's the elongation of the spring. Now, how do, we how do we define the force right here? The force on the spring is equal to the spring constant k times the displacement or the elongation of the spring, which we know now is x. So that's the force on the spring. And k would be peculiar to this particular spring. That means the force on the spring can be defined as k times x. And since x is equal to this, this would be equal to k times 2L sine of theta minus L sub naught. Now we're going to do virtual work to relate F to the force of the spring. So when we do virtual work, this is equal to, well, first of all, the only force is doing work is this force here and the force of the spring. Because here we know that the force against the wall is perpendicular to its motion. Here, this does not move, so neither one of these forces can do virtual work. So the virtual work is going to be equal to the force times the displacement dy1. Notice that the direction of the force is, is the same direction as the direction of the displacement dy1, so it's time cosine of the angle 0, which is equal to 1. Then we subtract from that. Why do we subtract? Well, we have the force of the spring, which is pulling upward, and the displacement dy2, which is downward. That's a difference of 180 degrees. The cosine of 180 is a minus 1. So therefore, minus the force of the spring times dy2, which means we need to find what dy1 and dy2 is relative to y1 and uh, y2. So y1, uh, dy1, is equal to the derivative of y1, and y1 is L sine theta, so that becomes L cosine of theta d theta. And dy2 is going to be twice that, because y2 is 2L sine theta, so this becomes 2L 
cosine of theta d theta. So now we know dy1 and dy2, which, oh, I don't want to square that. I want to put that down here. So now we can plug that in, realizing, of course, that the virtual work is equal to zero. So we have the force times dy1, dy1, the magnitude of that is L times the cosine of theta times d theta minus the force of the spring times dy2, which is 2L cosine of theta d theta, which is equal to zero. Now, since it's equal to zero, we can divide both sides by L, we can divide both sides by d theta, and we can divide both sides by cosine of theta, which means that the force minus two times the force of the spring is equal to zero, or the force of the spring is equal to one half, see here, yep, one half the force applied right here. So, Fs, the force of the spring, is only half the force applied here. Next, we want to find the force in terms of the angle and the force of the spring or the elongation of the spring. Let's see what we can do there. Here we can again write that F is equal to twice the force on the spring. And the force on the spring can be defined as Kx. So this would be equal to 2 times Kx. And since x is defined as 2L sine theta minus L sub naught, we can then say that the force applied in order to make the spring move is equal to 2 times k times 2L sine of theta minus L sub naught. And so there is the force required to move the spring depending upon the spring constant, the original length of the spring, and the angle, uh, the sine of the angle theta. And of course, L would be the length of the beam. We could also solve that equation for the sine of theta. If you want to do that, we can then say that we take the 2k times L sub naught, move to the other side. So we have F minus, well, the 2k times a minus L sub naught, move to the other side becomes a plus 2k L sub naught, which is equal to what's remaining on this side, which would be 2k times 2L sine theta, or 4k L sine of theta. And finally, if we then solve that equation for sine of theta, we can say that the sine of theta is equal to, on the left side we have the force applied, plus 2k L sub naught, which is the spring constant times the original length of the spring, divided by 4k L times, yeah, 4k L, where L is the length of the beam, k is the spring constant, and then the number four. And so there's a relationship between the angle and the force applied, the length of the beam, the original length of the spring, and the spring constant. So those are the kind of things that we're going to have to know in order to start attacking the concept of a truss with virtual work. But at least, again, you can see that the idea is that if you apply an additional load to a beam or an additional force to a spring, the spring will elongate, the beam will elongate or compress, depending upon which direction the force acts. And from that, we should be able to apply virtual work to see how the stress, the, the truss changes. And from that, we should be able to calculate the forces on the beams within the truss. So that's the concept we're trying to understand here. And we'll go on to some more examples to show you how to apply virtual work to some other constants or how to apply virtual work to some other concepts. And that's how it's done.